In this video, we are going to explore HD index painting with Krita. So what's HD index painting? This technique allows us to do pixel art using classic and TLS painting tools. It has been developed and documented by Dan Fessler, the main artist on the game Chasm. HD index painting or index painting consists of taking an image and reducing the number of its colors. Color indexing itself is commonly used to create pixel art from a big illustration that is being scaled down. In Krita, using just a few layers and a filter, we can reduce the colors of our painting in real time as we paint. How is that useful? Well, this allows us to use all of the tools a digital painting software offers without thinking about anti-aliasing or transparency. But this also allows us to precisely choose the colors and the amount of colors we want in our final piece. We can also use a procedural differing effect in our painting, thus change it anytime. HD index painting is ideal to cover large surfaces and in particular for everything related to backgrounds. Mountains, skies, but also houses, grass textures and other trees. This technique can be useful in many cases. So, how does it work? Well, we first paint in grayscale on a layer that is going to define the shape and volume of our pixel art. We then place a devouring texture on top of it and set it to the overlay blending mode. We then index the colors using a dynamic filter layer. In Krita, the index color filter will both quantize the values of our image and associate each value with a color of our choice. The main defect of this technique is that you have to recreate this small layer stack for each color palette or even each object present in your image. In the demo I made for this video, there are 8 layer groups like that. Setting up and managing a large file with this technique can take a lot of time. So that's why HD index painting is most efficient when you have to fill large surfaces. Let us now see how we can create our layer stack step by step in Krita. First of all, let's create the base layer we are going to paint on with shades of grey. We can block in a silhouette using our pixel art drawing tool and then activate the preserve alpha option on our brush to paint inside of the shape. On top of this layer, we add our devouring pattern. We set it to the overlay blending mode and then lower its opacity around 5 to 10%. You can use one of the predefined patterns in Krita combined with the fill tool, but you won't really find a default texture that's adapted to HD index painting. The Krita user Amadiro compiled multiple specific dithering textures for this purpose. You can find the Krita file in the video description below. Finally, we are going to add a filter layer. To create one, we have to look at the bottom left corner of the layer docker and click on the little arrow on the right of the add layer icon. We then have to press the F key or click on the filter layer option. In the newly opened window, you have to go in the artistic category and then choose the first filter, index colors. We can then validate our choice as we can reopen the filter properties later and edit them anytime. The color picker of the index colors filter is different from the one I use in Krita, and it's not practical. Thus, before setting up my colors for indexing, I like to prepare my palettes directly on the canvas. We can then sample the colors used by the filter directly from our document. Thus, I prepare 3 to 5 color swatches going from shadow to light for each tone used in my pixel art. In order to measure the effect of the indexation, we are going to create a black and white gradient on new layers situated under the filter. To do so, I use the rectangular selection tool and then the gradient tool inside of the selection. After you have clicked on the canvas with the gradient tool active, you can keep the shift key down to constrain it to the horizontal or vertical axis. We can now go back to our filter to modify its properties. We first right-click on the layer and then choose the first option, Properties. As I told you, this filter associates the values of our image with a color gradient. By default, it will use a gradient of 16 colors based on the 4 swatches that we can see in the RAMS category. If we look down, a checkbox allows us to precisely control the amount of colors we get. We can edit a color by clicking on it. I don't really like this color picker, so that's why I prepared my palette in advance. 
In Krita 2.9.6, the button without an icon you can find to the right of the color picker is actually our color sampling tool. After having clicked on it, we can pick a color on the screen. We repeat that for every color and our filter is ready. All we have left is to start painting on the layer situated at the bottom of the stack. Here are two pieces of advice to make it easier for you to work with this setup. First of all, you can play with the opacity of the dev ring pattern to change its impact on the pixel art. Also, we can lock the layer situated over our base painting layer. That way, when we try to pick a layer with the R key, we will always pick the layer on which we have to paint, not the filter, not the dev ring texture. This is especially useful when we start to have multiple groups in our Krita file. All right, that's it for today. Next week, we will expand on this technique and cover some practical uses. You can find the example I made for this video in the description below to get acquainted with HD index painting. As an exercise, you can try to add a tree, a sky, or even stairs to the composition. Don't hesitate to try it out. It's a bit hard to get into at first, but this technique is worth the effort. If you like the video, you can hit the like button, become a subscriber to support the channel or share it with your friends. Do you have a question or suggestions? You can leave me a message in the comments below or on social networks. I want to thank you all for watching. Be creative, have fun, until next time.